What's happening everybody, the Poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe as usual. You know, wear your masks and all that good stuff. Um, first and foremost, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, 5,000 YouTube subscribers is just mind-blowing. I'm, I'm very, very honored. There you go. Very honored. Thank you so much. Um, this has been a fun ride. First started this back at CES 2020, which seems like 10 years ago. But how many years are in 2020? Anyway, um, just thank you so much. And to all you TikTokers out there, the fifth, as of today, like 56,000 followers on TikTok, just thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So what I wanted to do today is to kind of like open up and share some of my uh, workflow actually for 4K video editing because my previous video, which I tore apart the box here, was on the Samsung 980 Pro uh, NVMe drive PCIe 4.0 7,000 megs per second read speeds, like ridiculous, redunculous, and all kinds of other adjectives. So I'm just gonna kind of work you through how this somewhat fits in my workflow. Now, I'm not doing anything to maximize 7,000 megs per second, but next year, maybe, because you might be seeing some of these videos in 8K. Uh, but this has already just been fantastic. The editing process in 4K has been absolutely smooth as butter. Um, but let me show you some of the real world uses I have for this. And maybe you can decide if it's real world applicable to you as well. Because all of my videos, I just want to make sure that you're aware of the capabilities of certain products. And if they even fit within your lifestyle or your workflow or your gaming needs. This is, this is not for gaming. All right, not for gaming. All right, so let's get into it. For YouTube, normally I'm using the Sony RX100 Mark VII to you know, gather all my 4K content and I save it on a SD card, which I use this to plug into Deep Blue here, my Threadripper system. And I've seen the experience of many other YouTubers where they've lost footage on their SD cards. So I immediately basically back it up. So first I put it on one of my RAID arrays as well as an external drive just for redundancy because once you shoot something once, it's hard to get that same effect when you're like, oh, yeah, this, this is the shot, right? So I have immediately redundancy. Then when I'm ready to actually uh, transfer it, and of course I do sometimes shoot B-roll with the open and close, hey, open and close, hey, with the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. Excellent for B-roll, I will say that. Um, so I do the same thing, just redundancy, transfer it over. And then when I'm ready to actually start editing, that's when I'll move content to the 980 Pro. It's one terabyte, and when you are editing in 4K, there's enough space on here for maybe to work on two projects at a time, realistically, all right? Uh, because I use DaVinci Resolve, and so I like to run what's called optimized media. When you're filming on like a Sony camera or something like that, basically it's compressing the video formats, uh, H.264, H.265, whatever. But basically it's just compressed video formats so you can easily transfer it from A to B, you know, put it on social media and all that stuff. But it's not meant for editing, all right? So you're not gonna get a truly seamless process scrubbing the footage and all that stuff. So running optimized media is very, very helpful, but depending on your system, it can take a very long time or just a few minutes. I got Deep Blue here, 32 cores, 64 threads, 64 gigs of RAM, 50 terabytes of storage space. I'm good. So I don't care how big the project is, I'm running optimized media. So let me show you what this initial process is like. So what you see here is my Samsung Galaxy Book S review on a three day long battery drain test. So feel free to check out that YouTube video. I'll put a link for that as well. But this was about 84 gigs with just all the, the video footage, not including the actual finished render. Uh, which was mm, 28 and a half gigs. So 4K content, you know, takes up a lot of space. So when I'm doing an in-depth video review of a laptop, it's gonna be one of my, you know, decent sized projects. So right now I'm transferring it over from an archive uh, storage, oh my, uh, one of my RAID zeros, I believe, um, over onto the Samsung 980 Pro, uh, which is the NVMe PCIe 4.0, uh, so 7,000 megs per second read speeds just over 5,000 megs per second right, but you can tell that the bottleneck here is basically the slower archival storage here. So this is for long-term storage, perfectly fine. Writing or transferring over at about 130 megs per second, that's fine because I don't really use this often in terms of like day to day to day. It's just moving 
the occasional large files when I'm ready to start working on a project. And to give you a frame of reference, you can see the 980 Pro right here is barely being used. It's at 5% usage basically, and it's writing at about 187 megs per second, while the external drive where the files are stored, it's basically maxed out at 98% and it's reading about 140 megs, 145 megs per second. So that gives you a bit of frame of reference between the capabilities of one very high-end drive and then one you know, normal external drive. Okay, so all the video files are transferred over from my external drive into the Samsung 980 Pro. And now on the 980 Pro, I can have them imported into DaVinci Resolve. And that's where I'm going to run the optimized media. This project is about 85 gigs right now, but these are all compressed file formats. So not ideal for actual editing. If I need to do any type of cutting or color corrections or just kind of scrubbing through the 4K footage, it's it will tend to be choppy. Even with a Threadripper 3970X with 64 gigs of RAM, it's still a compressed file format. So you're really putting a lot more strain on the processor where once you uncompress all of that in optimized media for DaVinci Resolve, it's a very smooth, smooth process. So now all the files are in DaVinci Resolve here and all I'm gonna do is highlight all the files, right click on them and say generate optimized media. So this is uncompressing or expanding all the files right now so that it's gonna be much easier for me to use them in everything I need to do in DaVinci Resolve here. So you'll see here in DaVinci Resolve that generating optimized media does take a while, especially 4K. And so I'm running a separate clock on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 here. And what you will notice is that one, the GPU is getting hit pretty decently. So about 40%, 50% on average. Uh, so this is a Vega 64 being cooled by an EKWB water block. And this is the Asus uh, Strix of Vega 64. Uh, you'll notice the Threadripper is actively getting used. So that's gonna bounce around from 30 to probably 85, 90% uh, continuously. And I'm at about you know, 21 gigs of RAM used. The F drive here, that's the Samsung 980 Pro that we're working with here, this bad boy. And pretty much you'll see that the limitation is most likely just going to be the Threadripper. So 32 cores, 64 threads is possibly the bottleneck for this Samsung 980 Pro here. So you'll see that the write speeds are well above what a SATA SSD can do. And um, overall, this is actually looking like a very fluid project that's being handled, but definitely the uh, Samsung 980 Pro is not the bottleneck whatsoever. Now, for those that are curious, what's cooling this Threadripper 3970X is the Optimus Threadripper 3 water block. So feel free to take a look at some of my YouTube videos that I've showcased not only cleaning this, uh, like opening up, taking apart, you know, cleaning it out, getting it ready for this build here, uh, but also its performance. And for doing an optimized media here, you'll see that the Threadripper is being heavily used. Overall, the temperatures have been fantastic. Pretty much every single CCD is in the mid 60s or somewhere around there. And then even the T-Dye is at 74 degrees Celsius. The uh, GPU temps are maxed out at 37. And the fluid temps right now are at 34 degrees Celsius. So really, really happy with this system. And you can tell that it's quiet. That's one of the beauties of a water cooling system. It's easy to edit video in a room because this basically doesn't make any noise whatsoever. All right, so the optimized media just finished and it was 30 minutes, almost exactly to the dot. Yes, this is my, uh, I love the Galaxy Z Fold 2. I still have a detailed review coming for this and check out the video that I showed with uh, Samsung, them actually removing the protective screen layer on it, but neither here nor there right now. So let's, let's get into this. So you can see right here that the drive is now full, absolutely full. And that's because running optimized media has that effect where when you're um, caching these clips, this thing right here is going to be ginormous. So you're gonna see here that this is taking up the entire drive right now, if uh, the camera can focus, but basically it's gonna show probably like 800 gigs used. And oh, look, 809 gigs. So speed is one thing, but space is a whole nother thing. So 
That video in particular was the three day long battery drain test for the Samsung Galaxy Book S. Love this laptop, go ahead and check that video out if you have some questions. Um, and I do highly still recommend this laptop. But for this video, yes, the Samsung 980 Pro, it's an amazing drive. It will not be your bottleneck whatsoever in terms of speed, but for 4K video projects where I'm doing an in-depth review, it's not big enough. So I'm looking forward to the two terabyte version of this. Uh, yes, I could use optimized media on another drive, but then kind of what's the point of this drive? So for DaVinci Resolve, there's an easy workaround for this. You can actually run optimized media on the exact clips that you want, which is perfectly fine because I just copied over everything and ran optimized media regardless of whether it was a usable clip or not. And trust me, just filming this, I think I'm on take four. <laughs> so obviously there's plenty of clips that I could just delete and not worry about that. So an 85 gig video project, maybe only, you know, 50, who knows? Um, but I would have to go through that and actually delete all the clips that I know for a fact I'm not going to use. Having a drive big enough to just blanket, optimize media, everything is convenience. That's all it is. Realistically, uh, from now on, because I know I have just a one terabyte limit uh, for my larger projects, I will actually go through and delete the clips that I know are just garbage. So that's about it. That's my real world use. I love it. This is not the bottleneck with speed. The bottleneck is probably the Threadripper 3970X, oddly enough, when you're optimizing that much 4K footage. So that's about it. Uh, thank you very much, all 5,000 subscribers. Yay! All that stuff. I'll have to find that kid's clip. Yay! You know. um, but uh, also, thank you very much to all the followers on TikTok as well, the 56,000 of you too. So this is basically my 4K video editing workflow in terms of just file management. Once that project is complete, then the completed project just goes back to my RAID array and the external storage. I like redundancy uh, because again, I've learned from the mistakes of others in the YouTube verse where they've said, oh my God, I've lost all my footage or some of my footage. So I'm trying to avoid all of that. So as soon as I can get it off that SD card onto multiple platforms, I'm good to go. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the share button and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.